Tonight on The New Inventors, a portable fridge that'll heat your dinner up. We bite back at the bed bugs. And why we need to weigh beehives. Beds. Your bed should be a place of peace, serenity. It should be somewhere where you feel calm and safe. But if you share your bed with another, that may not happen. <laughs> Instead of resting peacefully, you might be tossing and turning all night and the next day you'll be tired and worn out. That's why we need to find a way to keep those bed bugs out. You probably don't want to know this, but almost every hotel and hostel has either had bed bugs or is at risk of getting bed bugs. They are an absolute nightmare to deal with because even though toxic chemical sprays kill the bed bugs, they don't kill the eggs or hidden nests. Bed bugs come in on luggage and infest all parts of the room. At night, they cross the carpet and travel up the bed legs in search of blood, human blood. My invention protects hotel beds from bed bugs. The bed bug barrier is placed discreetly on the bed legs. Inside the unit is a cavity filled with non-drying, non-toxic glue that bed bugs can't cross. Bed bugs crawl up, get stuck and die. It's a safe, low cost and effective solution to infestations. With my invention, guests can get a great night's sleep without the fear of bed bug bites. Please welcome from Melbourne, Tony Abrahams. <laughs> hey Tony. Okay, this is our sixth year of doing the show. Yep. Uh, about 120 inventors every year. You are the quickest mm -hmm. from idea to being on the show. How long ago since you had the idea? Eight weeks. Eight weeks, ladies and gentlemen, and he's done it already. <laughs> Amazing. And it is something that seems simple, but yet is yep. ingenious and could have a huge market, I reckon. Well, bed bugs. Let's have a look at uh, bed bugs here and see how yucky they are. Look at them. They're about how big are they? About the size of an apple seed. About the size of an apple seed, and they get in and they bite you and they give you a rash. Or what are they doing? Carpet? Well, they they nest in carpet, under carpet. Yeah, and you might have to pull it up. Yeah. So they're bed bugs. Boo, boo the bed bugs. You put a bit of this gl glue. Yep. It isn't your invention, but no. you put it in here. Yep. Then you shut it. But actually, you're going to sell them like this already. Yes. Already gooed up, uh, and then you simply imagine this is. Um, upside down on a bed, you simply just twist it in. Yep. There we go. And the, they will crawl in there and then in and the, then get they'll get in the glue and well, they'll die. Uh, okay, that's one type of bed, but there's a different type of bed and you've got a slightly different model. So yep. show us um, how that goes. That goes on even easier, doesn't it? Bang! Yep. You've got it. They're caught. Lovely. Come back to the panel. How much are they going to cost, Tony? Around three to four dollars. Okay. And with each bed's got four or six legs. And could you put an economic case to hotel owners, youth hostel owners, that would actually save the money? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've spoken to um, hotels that have spent three thousand dollars pulling up the carpet in one room. Yeah. Yeah. And then they come back. Yeah. And do it again. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Different bed bugs, presumably, unless they're very resilient. Bernie. Oh, Tony, I've never been this itchy on an episode of the show before, <laughs> so thanks very much for that. And I love a low tech solution. You've basically just made the old sugary water fly trap for, for bed bugs, so I think that's fantastic. Now, with the, the glue that is just something that people already use in the horticultural, yep, horticultural. industry, that's going to run out at some time. How are you going to know, or, or you're going to need to refresh it at some time? How does the owner know when to top it up? Well, it, it, the bed it's bugs a... stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only way that glue would dry out is if it was covered in bed bugs right. or it was covered in dust. Enough said. So yeah. I've designed it in a way so death dust generally settles. So I've designed them both in a way that the, the won't, you know, the dust shouldn't be getting in. Yeah, Tony, since the glue is sticking the bugs and then they're starving to death, is it possible you could get enough dead bugs in there that they could form like a dead bed bug bridge mm. and the next lot of bed bugs could go over the dead bed bug bridge up well, into the bed? I mean, what, a, about... what a macabre imagination, <laughs> but it's a good question. Um, there's quite a bit of glue. That, uh, the surface area is probably about um, 20 square centimetres, um, so it would have, have to be a lot of bed bugs to... So you have to have left it for ages or be real and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And if, uh, you know, if you're catching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, then it's done a good job. Chris? Yeah, most of the research, and I understand it, has shown that the biggest way bed bugs get in is on people's luggage, which they normally put on the bed. So yep. if they're putting the luggage on the bed, the bed bugs are on the bed, 
Um, what percentage of the problem is going to be for that person coming up from the floor in addition to that? Well, that's where you have the mattress protectors. So, so they're still already on top of the mattress protector? Yeah, well, they can't live on the mattress protector. So once they're on the mattress protector, bed bugs like little crevices and they like to hide. They right. don't like um, flat spaces. So, so they'll migrate they'll, down, they'll will they? move off the right. bed at night. And that'll get them migrating down as well as up? Yeah. Mm. OK. And have you thought about putting pheromones or baits mixed up with the... So it's actually trying to track them in there? Well, the guests are actually the bait. <laughs> so, don't yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to fit inside uh, that, bait. let me tell you. They <laughs> want you. Yeah, cover me in glue and, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Summing up, bait. Oh, um, look, Tony, the, the glue's not new and barriers on the legs aren't new, but your idea to just put those two simple things together has made a really effective solution to the problem. It's great. Bait number no, two. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know bed bugs travelled in luggage and now I find I'm giving them a free ticket straight on to my bed. I'm going to completely change my hotel habits thanks to you, Tony. Well done. Yeah, the great feature of this invention, I think, is its simplicity and its completely innocuous nature environmentally. You know, there's just nothing you could really find as a downside for this from that point of view, and I think that's a wonderful feature. Yeah, it's, it's simple and it seems very effective. Good on you, Tony. Please take Tony Abraham. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good on you. Thank you. So, who's going to win? Which of the three would you pick? Our judge's choice could be named our inventor of the year. Will it be the portable food heating and cooling hooly dooly, the bed bug stopping bed bug barrier, or the beekeeper helping hive weighing beehive scales? Let's look uh, at a number of criteria. Chris, which do you think gets the points on design? Yes, well, it's interesting because you have there's a lot of assumptions you have to make to to actually decide that. And for me, the design for the beehive scales is terrific. Assuming that the bees do in fact feed uh, fill from the centre out, that's which Andrew assures us they do. And he's a beekeeper. And he's a beekeeper. <laughs> and the second hum assumption is that there is a good correlation between uh, between the, it's not it's an arithmetic correlation yeah. between you know when you weigh it from the edge yeah, yeah. and what the total weight is. Now, if they're both correct then I think that's a very clever design. Well, I, rather, I rather like the simplicity also of the bug, bed bug yeah. thing. It, it's very similar in that it's a super simple way of doing it and it sort of seems quite obvious. Both of them seem quite obvious and yet, um, well, yet they're, they're inventive. The bed done bug it. barrier for me gets it for design just because of the simplicity. Really, what can go wrong? You know, As long as you're um, sticking it on the, the legs of the bed and you haven't got the bed hooked up to well, the wall or dead something. Dead bed bug bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it could well, go wrong. I mean, that yeah, could. Yeah. It just on the holy dooly and the market, I do think there is a huge market in catering for events that are outdoors. Weddings, huge mm. um, outdoor events of all sorts. And I do think that there are huge advantages in being able to pack that thing down and get more of them into the back of a truck when you're arriving. Whether yeah, it's yeah. a 40 But Sally, who, uh, if you look at the cost, you can buy an ordinary Bay Marie or two Bay Maries for, let's say, four or $5,000 mm. in total. There's a heck of a lot of freight difference that you can pay for yeah, between there and 42,000. There's a lot of people carrying freight. that stuff, yeah. yeah. And that, that's the really they only issue. keep it warm, but they don't cool it down. No, but you can buy a bain marie no, and a refrigeration unit for or a hot you know, less than 10,000. Yeah, the fridge yeah. is the fridge is the, the part where it has mm. a lot more innovation, I think, than just the straight bain I mean, it's a great I, idea, but I think maybe just some, some um, cost saving, some cost yeah. saving yeah. Uh, yeah. economies yeah. in there would get it to so it's affordable. For me, the originality comes from the beehive scales. It's, you know... As Andrew said, it's the only one that lets you, um, you know, just carry this little lightweight scale thing that can cope with the weight of the of the mm -hmm. hive. Well, there are other bee, beehive scales about, but they're quite expensive because they involve going under every and hive. And you can leave this little yeah. chunk of pallet yeah. underneath and, and just go and do that. Yeah. I think that's a, the way to split that design yeah. down was brilliant. But exciting. I still think originality, the bed bug barrier again for me, the idea of having having such a simple device at the at a kind of bottleneck point where mm. all the all mm. the insects have to travel. Who do you think is going to win tonight, Chris? Tonight I'm going to give my award to the bed bug barrier. Hmm. Uh, you don't actually have your own award. <laughs> my vote, then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's like an award, the though. Chris you know? Russell. The Chris Russell Award <laughs> sounds much better. All right, the bed bug barrier. Um, do either of you two disagree with that? No, I'll give Chris's award to the bed bug barrier. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd like to add the Sally Deminks award to the bed bug barrier, too. <laughs> then all the judges give all their awards to Tony Abrahams and his bed bug barrier. Congratulations, Tony. Well done, mate. Good on you. Tony's in the running to be named our inventor of the year.